Well, welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name's Gavin Smith, and if you're joining us on video, then here's a little wave. I'm excited to have Nigel Ring join us. I've never actually heard the word wicked and accountant <laughs> put in the same sense. Well, good morning and welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name is Gavin Smith, and it's a joy to welcome you today to this Church Administration Podcast. We love talking about everything that happens behind the scenes and i've got a good friend of mine becky thomas on the podcast today becky welcome thanks for coming back thanks it's great to be back it's great to be here and we were just chatting earlier about all the things that we've got going on we, we often have a little catch up becky and i and uh, two church administrators uh, who yeah caring for each other and um and we were just sharing each other's task lists and I said we should do this on the podcast because <laughs> as we chat and and as other people email in about the podcast they're like how do you get everything done uh how do I have knowledge in finance as well as buildings as well as law as well as you know cleaning programs and all sorts of things so uh yeah they, they often describe our jobs don't they as you know spinning lots of plates and it's a common one isn't it and but that is how we live isn't it Becky absolutely I think it's probably one of the things that I've I've said most often when people kind of say what's your job and you tell them your title which really yeah. tells you absolutely nothing at all um Gav and I have quite different titles but I think I actually do very similar jobs yeah. um but yeah then like how do you try and summarize what what do you actually do yeah you know when you start explaining and and somebody says oh so you, you're in HR well yeah kind of yeah and then you say a bit more and it's like yeah building management too. yeah that too and yeah. yeah it's it's there's nothing quite like church administration as a job is there I'm, I'm not sure there's much that's very comparable it is so so true and I, I had a couple of emails and a couple of people have been listening into the podcast and thank you so much for sending in like your questions and your observations and stuff I, I mean I had one email that came in this week was like saying gav we haven't had a podcast for like three weeks what's happened are you okay you know it's like well i'm fine we just we've just been so busy and i guess it's like this is what's going on and 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 we both do kind of jobs as well as other things so so um yeah please forgive me for not not having this kind of two weekly bang on podcast uh, (laughs) so what are some of the the things that are making you busy at the minute let's if you've if you've not in church administration and you might be listening as a pastor you know this is going to be like a little reflection as to you know what goes on in our world um and i'll share some things that i'm working through and and there is this expectation on us to know everything about everything so yeah what have you got on your list that you're working on at the minute um so quite a big part of my job is kind of compliance related stuff Mm -hmm. Um, and we've got a trustees meeting coming up in um, 10 days time. Um, so quite a lot of my workload has been related to that recently. Yeah. Um, so that's lots of looking at kind of policies, um, policies that we wrote a few years ago, kind of going, OK, we wrote this policy a couple of years ago. Does it still, you know, one of my big phrases is we need to do what we say and say what we do. Yeah. You know, so we need good policies. And if the policy doesn't isn't the same as what we do in practice, we have to say, well, is our practice wrong or is our policy wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, lots of lots of prep for trustees meeting has been a big part of my, you know, making sure that we've got all the information together, that trustees can see what's been going on. Um, they're busy people aren't they the people who serve as our trustees as our elders as our deacons as our pccs whatever we call them they're very often some of the busiest people you'll meet so trying to put together information for them in a kind of concise and helpful way recognizing that they won't find it easy to wade through 57 pages of documents and policies is um yeah Definitely a big part of what I've been doing the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and and that is a big part of the role, isn't it? Yeah, preparing documents, getting stuff sorted for trustees. I think we've we've done that. We've kind of gone through some review on policy and safeguarding stuff, and and you do have to keep on doing that, don't you? And yeah. Regularly updating that, and and people forget. Yeah. So I think I sent a, our, our safeguarding policy out to our trustees, you know, and it's like it's been a year, and you just 
forget, don't you, uh, what what's in there? And you've got to keep going back to it and reminding people uh, of why we're doing it. And you're right, are our, are our practices still working? Are we still doing our DBS checks? Are we still hitting those 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 points? And um, and yeah, little reviews on on those things. I've got at the minute on my list um, a new website and a new app for the church. So, you know, Gav, can you sort this out? You know, we need a new website. <laughs> and uh, So add yeah. web designer to your list of skills then. Yeah, so I got no idea. But, uh, you know, I put the church office together and they said, well, Gav, you've done this website, so you should be able to do our church one. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but I paid someone, to, you know, good to do <laughs> yeah. it. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm in the process of kind of trying to serve our church and thinking, right, okay, how do I put something together that, that, that's going to work well for them? And, and we've gone down the app road and seen some churches using apps as not just a, a way to communicate, but more of a discipleship app as well. So how are you stuff. using your app? Because we don't have one, so I'm Ooh. interested in the concept. Okay. Well, we're using a company called Subsplash, and they've got a kind of product that you can buy into. Again, it's everything's like monthly subscriptions now. It's yeah. not It's not like you pay, right, 3000 for a website and this for an app. Yeah. You know? But um, so you, you, it's all subscription-based now. And so, yeah, you change something on the app, it changes on the website. Okay. And so the website is more of a kind of vista based outside the church kind of you know yeah. here we are kind of thing and the app then is a lot more steered into um to the church so we've been able to kind of put on all our sermons or teaching series we've been able yeah. to kind of like put them into topics and make them easily accessible through the app so you're getting you're getting people on the phones i think the big thing i think that's going to make a huge difference is the notifications so okay, we send yeah. out emails, we send out texts, we send out different things saying, right, you know, there's a new podcast or this week's message is up for those that are on kids work and you can access it here. And we do all that all the time where one change on the app and the website will push out a notification for people to go straight to their app and yeah. access the podcast, access the message. Um, it's got messaging functionality. So you can have groups that are set up in the app to message each other, whether it be prayer things or... Yeah small groups or you know those who are involved in the allotment project right we're all getting together this time and you can you can do it and it'll notify you on the app again so yeah super excited about like yeah it'd be really interesting to see in how that goes so i think you can i think it's available for people to download outside the church so when it's live i'll i'll put it on the on the website and i i hope to do kind of an interview with subsplash because i think it'd be interesting for other churches to to look yeah. at um so I yeah, it could be a really useful tool. And I think w what's great is the app it almost kind of comes with the website. So okay. so the kind of this actually doing it together is great. And I, I think we get I don't know, I don't know for other church administrators, but I get a bit fed up of like posting something on Facebook and Instagram and all these places. And I know there are tools that you can just do it in one place, but but to just to have right, we're gonna center everything that you know, information that people need. Is going to be on this app and you can access it easily on your phone and but the more different places we have to like update bits of information the more yeah. likely it is that we get errors isn't yeah. it you know it's you know one bit doesn't get updated or whatever so being able to change it all in one place sounds fab it's great and i think we probably spent i don't know seven to eight maybe more on the website five years ago and they do seem to run out of date quite yeah. quickly and, and, and this is a kind of a constantly an area of like you know you go back to the the management team saying right we need another five grand for a new website and they're like what you only had that a few years ago you know and it's like yeah but it's 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 moved on and it's changed and it moves on so fast doesn't it it's so hard and, and it gets dated so quickly and you're like this really does this website really doesn't represent the church and the family and the life yeah. and so we need to kind of address it and, and the way people access websites has changed massively yeah. you know you look at our data for our website now virtually nobody looks at it on a laptop <laughs> yeah. um, or on a desktop computer it's all on tablets and yeah. phones and that has an impact and yeah. so it's great and uh, as part of this you get a tv app which I'm quite excited about. So if someone's got like, you know, a, a fancy TV and you can download apps, you can download the chat church app and you could be sat in your lounge watching Sunday's message, you know, midweek uh, as a home group or as a group or small group where I'm like, this is so cool. So yeah, so there's some very <laughs> cool little kind of quirky bits to it. That I'm like super excited about. So, um, so we're going to try and launch that in September. And so I've kind of got that bit going on, but um, the other kind of online thing that we're doing at the minute, which I'm glad there are some other people in our office who 
know what they're doing is we've got this new um moodle site like a training site okay and we're trying to direct people there for safeguarding training young people's training you know who's who you know whatever we've got how do you access curriculum yeah you know, training things that we put on in an evening how do we do that online and we've signed up to this moodle site and we've been trying to build that together and you can like the safeguarding training is great because you can give like a video do a little talk and then they have to complete a test online and it's like a oh, pass wow. or fail test and and so it's a really good thing so we've we've been setting that up so I'm like and can and can you set those up kind of very customized so yeah. you can because sometimes online training is a good thing and sometimes it can be really dreadful can't it oh yeah yeah I did the food hygiene certificate the other day online and it was it was it was hard work it was like two hours of videos questions tests and and it, and it was lengthy and, and maybe it is you know it is needed but you know yeah how do we make something accessible to the church and I was just thinking there's always that period of time isn't there I think this is part of the reason where you, you've got a new recruit for kids work say they, they they're in the process of a DBS and applications and stuff wouldn't it be great to go right here's you know your heart is to serve in this area yeah we've got the got to do these steps first before you start would you jump on this training module and do this this and this and this and it tracks it all it emails the office when they've completed it so we've got we've got this kind of yeah we can we can see what's happening we can mm. see what people have done it and and it's one of those ones where you can't just click through to the end but you you do have to watch it and <laughs> i'm sure it is frustrating for a user but actually you know to bring them out for an evening you know three times or once every term to do this stuff we can be gathering together as a team and praying together more than just going through the training. So yeah. yeah. And you can do it on your phone and we've linked it all up through the app as well. And I'm like, this is great, but, but also busy, you know, so I'm learning loads of stuff, which is cool. And I think that is one of the other joys of it, isn't it? You're like, yeah, yeah I've been asked to do this training module site. I think I know nothing about it. Speak to a couple of school teachers and they're like, Oh yeah, we use this all the time great right let's start building a team start learning about this stuff and and you know get it going so I wonder if there's some people listening to this podcast who are going that's great Gav but we've got loads of people who aren't online in our church yeah um it's definitely something that we've we've talked a bit about at different yeah. points how, how do we make the most of some of this new technology yeah um without excluding people yeah yeah, absolutely right. I think it's it's a it's it is a challenge, and I think one of the things that we've chatted to our older members is they were saying they they're quite good with using apps, and I think going along the app thing is 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 a good way that you click in. Everything is yeah. in that kind of one place, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the the you know the thought of right, have I got the right web address and typing it in and getting that and following a link and logging in and all of that? It's like oh you lose people don't you in that process yeah. who are not absolutely techy and, and and struggle with that or you may not even get them to the website in the first place because they're just reluctant to do it but yeah I think we would still offer the training in person I think and there are there are yeah if you had an older group of people who were available in the day then like we'll put something on for them you know like an afternoon yeah. and do it um but it, it is think... it's good to be mindful of everyone isn't it the the demographic in the church and, and yeah and who can I think the other thing is. we've we've done which is a, a pretty small thing is just try and say to people look if you just need help getting your app set up or your yeah. you know a link saved in a in an easy place for you to find yeah then feel free to bring your phone bring your tablet <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 we'll help That's you right. get your app downloaded or yeah. uh you know the website saved in your favorites and show you how to find your favorites yeah Absolutely it's a right. small thing but for some people it's enough it is the kind of setup and getting going that they yeah. can't do and once they're on it it's definitely something we found even with something like qr codes yes qr codes yeah. um and um you know some of our older folk were saying oh, i can't can't work this out at all <laughs> um now they're the most avid every time they want publicity for something can we have a qr code on it <laughs> it's great those are great aren't they great things yeah we used the qr codes a lot during um lockdown when we had people come to the building um yeah. for you know their vaccination stuff and we had these up on posters and people were you know connecting in either to alpha or videos and yeah. you know, what could we do that could just and it, it, it is so true we want to kind of keep up with everyone but we also want to bring the church with us don't we with some of this like yeah. new technology and, and that that can be a challenge all right so we've got website apps um 
trustees, governance, compliance. Um, give me something else. There's, I know we're going to cover everything here. What else have you got <laughs> on the task list? Um, so we're in the process of working towards quite a big building project. Ah, yes. Um, so, yeah, um, probably the building management stuff is my least favourite bit. Yeah. Of, of the different things that I do um, so it's not my happy place um, <laughs> you know looking at drawings and yeah trying to work out whether they put enough plug sockets on and yeah. all of those kind of things so that yeah and then obviously the other part of having the building work done is that, so there's the work itself and what do we want and what are we trying to achieve and how does this serve our gospel work here yeah there's also the the builders are saying we can't use our main hall for 10 weeks. Oh, joy. Okay. <laughs> uh, now what? <laughs> now we have so, to use it. That's quite a major thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the logistics of, of, of how the does location. church happen when we don't yeah. have our big room? Yeah. Our big room that we fill three times on a Sunday is not going to be available for 10 yeah. weeks. Yeah. That, that is scary. Yeah. So just that's, think about all that's the logistics big, of setup and item on my to-do yeah, list. Yeah, that's just another item, but it's like, yeah, yeah, got a huge list. Um, yeah, bu building maintenance is our time for it now. Now, so I've got our kind of like, you know, building manager come in saying, over the summer I want to do this, this, and this, and this. I need this money, and I want to close down this room and do this. And so we're now going into that season where I'm getting presented with all these ideas and and yeah. I have to kind of start to go right what are we going to do and how are we going to do this? You know, can we jet wash the outside of the building? Can we, can we put up a play park and we need a new fence here and I'd like to paint the whole of the main hall. And you're like, that's going to be a good two weeks worth of painting, right? How are we going yeah. to make that work? And so, yeah, so buildings are, are on the list. Yeah. And HR, you said earlier, we're yeah. in the middle of doing staff reviews um, and I love staff reviews. They're great and uh, really needed. Um, but also, you know, it does a whole work in me thinking, actually, how am I doing as a manager? And so they kind of, you become quite vulnerable as well in these times because, um, you know, you realise that actually uh, I'm not doing as well as I thought I could do or am doing, you know, so there's things like that. So any yeah, HR staff things coming, for you? Staff going is always yeah. part of the job. So we have um, ministry trainees every year. So they're okay. with us for 11 months of the year. So it sort of feels like, that we're always either recruiting, inducting, or saying goodbye to, <laughs> to those guys. One of those things, yeah, yeah. And then just just with that, you know, with with you know, like talking about interns and stuff. Yeah, we're doing we're doing some of that at the minute. So there's got to be social media posters, content. There's there's got to be application forms. We need yep. to start thinking about interview process. We need to start thinking about when a student's coming out and starting to think about gap years and internships. And um, yeah, that's definitely on the list. Yeah. Anything else? What else you got? Uh, what else is on my list? Um, I'm going to I mean, look there's, at my board. There's, I think there's a kind of, there's a perpetual round of, of logistics stuff. Um, you know, so we're, we're start. I, d I don't know whether I dare say this. We're starting to think about Christmas. Oh, yes. Come on. I love that Christmas. <laughs> I know you love Christmas. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's that constant yeah. kind of planning, trying yeah. to be a few steps ahead. You know, so we've had that conversation this week. Christmas Day is a Monday this yeah. year. Yeah. So what does that mean for when we do carol services, for when we do the kids services? What yeah. other Christmas events do we want to do this yeah. year? Um, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's interesting because I had a meeting last week with someone um, who was saying they want to do a Christmas Day meal for those that are on their own this year. We've done it in the past, and other yeah. churches have done it. And it's like it's it's like no, I really feel called to do this. And you're like, great, let's release you to do this. But yeah, we got to talk about hygiene, civics with menus, yeah. transport. You know how many we need, how many we had previously. Um, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? How quickly this comes around. We're already talking about September launching new curriculum with kids work yeah. and implications on that. Um, and I, I know we've got staff, you know, we're in bigger churches. We've got staff that are doing, you know, part-time roles or, or volunteering roles in these things. And so we're not not on this on our own. But at the same time, they're on our list, aren't they, of things yeah. that we have to do. I'm in the middle of writing um, with a colleague a funding bid for a playground. Um, okay. So we've got through the first stage and we're like on to the next stage. But with that, you've got to have 
three quotes you've got to have yeah. a tender process that you've done and established um the time that takes to do that um yeah. is nuts and then you have these random things give me a random thing I, well let me give you my random thing this week came through okay. email comes through this week we've got a, a, a telephone mast on our property it's been there probably 25 years or something um saying it's come to the end of the contract it's a small income each year for us to have it on site and they've just gone well we're going to reduce it by yeah 10 percent of whatever it was uh so we were getting like four thousand, and now we're going to give you like 400 quid a year to have this thing on site and you're like uh no what am i doing and then there's all this law around telephone masks and the government trying to put together schemes to to have a, a serviceable network for everybody and so actually as you start to look into the law and i'm thinking right i don't know anything about this you start reading you go you can't actually remove these very easily from your property um and even though they're offering you a tiny amount of money uh, from what it was you know 20 years ago um there's not a great deal that you have to do with so i have to like know something about this whole area as well so it's totally random i can totally come out of the blue absolutely um, you find you find yourself delving into all kinds of obscure things don't you you know we've got trees with preservation orders on ooh. on our site you know and and somebody comes and says well the ivy's running really rampant up this tree um but the so can we chop it all down? And I'm saying, but that tree's got a preservation order on it. So that means that we have to contact the council before we're allowed to do any work yeah. on that particular tree. But does that apply? Because it's not the tree we want to do work on. It's the ivy that's growing up the tree yeah. that we want to, you know, and it is the, you know, so much about very, very random things. Yeah. Yeah, um, true. you know, and equally, you find yourself doing odd things. The number of times I've had people find me doing slightly odd things and they say, <laughs> Becky, is that in your job description? And you say, yeah. well, not really. Yeah. But it's not in anybody else's job description either. <laughs> and it needs doing. Yeah. So here I am. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's funny. I was I was repairing a, a zip boiler uh tap thing that came the other day and we had a quote for it it was something like 180 pounds for someone to come in and do this and i was like i know plumbing shop i'm sure they've got these zip taps i can do this there's no way i'm gonna pay 180 yeah. pounds. and i'm thinking I, you know everyone's looking going why is gav so motivated for this you know to change he's not even very good at diy but it's just you, you go do i want to pay that or no actually i can do that for like 30 quid and I'll, I'll do it myself and um yeah you do jump to these kind of random things um, yeah yeah or something that you find somebody you do it but they can't do it for three weeks well yeah. that's no use to me so i guess i'll do it yeah and then and then it's things like um you know updating contracts like this week i was updating contracts for like uh fire extinguishers and you know services on those and you know you, you kind of have these kind of annual agreements or two-year agreements and, yeah and all of those come around and and um yeah so the whirlwind i guess yeah if, if you're listening to this podcast listening and you're thinking yeah this is my life yeah i can identify with these guys and this is how we do live i think isn't it of, of kind of keeping everything going but you've still got to keep all your you know your payments that you need doing following all your different procedures for your finance you know health and safety um helping people with their risk assessments uh helping people with their projects and their planning um and that's that's the other thing isn't it you know you you could listen to all that and you could go that's an awful lot of paperwork and doing yeah. stuff but actually a huge part of this job is a people job too yeah it's probably what I tell you surprised me most yeah. um, about the job that I do. Yeah. Just how much it's a people job. Yes. Um, you know, spending time with people, talking to people, supporting people, um, you know, with with random things and important yeah. things, um, listening to people. Yeah. Um yeah, I, and how, I love how that. we balance yeah. that prioritizing yeah. of um somebody who's come into the church building who just wants a bit of a chat yeah yeah so versus true somebody who wants help with writing a risk assessment versus i've got this policy that i've got to review yeah 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 and and, and those bits i do love i love it when someone from the church comes in they've got a new idea for a ministry or 
they just come and say, I just want to serve in this area. I'm not doing anything. Can you link me up? Can you get going? Oh, I mean, those stuff you love. Yeah. And um, they see it as an interruption. It's like, oh, sorry, I'm interrupting you in the week. I'm like, no, this is this is some of the best parts of the job, isn't it? And yeah. um, and as we were praying earlier before, you know, connecting the practical work of ministry to the gospel. And um, people might be hearing this podcast going, I would hate that job. Um, but it's I love it. And it's just that there's joy in it. And and I, I think um, as well as all the, the, the task lists that we're doing, um, uh, you know what we are doing behind the scenes is enabling gospel ministry to happen it's enabling people to hear the good news of jesus it's taking the gospel out into our communities i love working with our mercy ministry teams and volunteer groups that are going out there every week serving people on food banks and cap and and so my week might have half an hour a week of cap related questions or meetings or food bank but i i love that diversity and um and one of our pastors was saying, I don't know how you keep, how do you sleep at night? Just trying to remember where you are on this last task, you know, and what you've got to do tomorrow and what you've got to do this week. And um, there is, there's grace in it, isn't there? Yeah. And I think, you know, it is on those tough days when you don't know which way is up and stuff's yeah. flying at you and you're trying, you're trying to send stuff out and stuff's coming in. It is remembering why we do what we do yeah. that keeps you going yeah when otherwise i think you just go this is insane yeah w what what am i even <laughs> doing here it, yeah it is remembering that we're doing this to enable the gospel to go out yeah like that's what keeps me going when, absolutely yeah otherwise i think i'd have thrown the towel in a long time ago yeah simply because some days are just loopy yeah you know, you're in the middle of something and somebody comes and says, Becky, there's a blocked toilet. And then the phone rings and, you know, everything yeah. happens at once. And you yeah. go, what am I doing? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is random. I, I'm sure Emma really appreciates the, the conversations when we get home. It's like, you did that today? And what? You you were involved in, like, how did you get time to to do all that? But there's, 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 there's grace at work and... um yeah it's a privilege to serve our churches and so if you're serving administration or operations behind the scenes then then let me encourage you know god's pleasure and delight and smile over you as you serve him and and make the connections yourself between the things that you're doing and to the gospel because that is the thing that brings fresh desire and joy and motivation there's just this overflowing of the gospel that that we want i want that to be a daily part of my activities and um and and connections so uh yeah love that now we've we've benefited from connecting together and and praying together even even today it's been an absolute joy um you can has a network of people if you're in the uk listening to this then then there's a uk church administrators network and i i love meeting with other administrators and connecting isn't it great you know you might be sitting in this podcast listening to this going these guys get me and that is some of the, the beauty isn't it of linking up with someone who does your job um who are on the same wavelength and uh, just know what it's like Absolutely. I, I said earlier, there's nothing quite like church administration as a job. Yeah. And so meeting with other people who inhabit this weird and wonderful world of, of church administration and get that our days wildly vary and we yeah. jump from fixing toilets to writing policies to doing whatever else we do. Um, and yeah. yeah, it's a huge blessing, really. Yeah. And very often when we come across those things, you know, when somebody when you suddenly realize you need to know about this very obscure yeah. thing, there's almost some always somebody else who's done it first. Yeah. Because, yeah. oh, yeah, I, I had to do that. Um, yeah. And that's just hugely helpful. Yeah, it is. It is great. Yeah. We, we sent a, a funding pack to somebody this morning who saying like we, we had a. 65,000 for a national lottery grant for a disabled suite and someone else is going to apply for that and they were like can you give us this and you're like yeah let's do it and and having yeah a time and, and a place and space to be able to kind of share what we're doing and our jobs and our tasks and stuff you do find people who yeah like you're saying who've done this before and I love church administrators hearts that are brilliant at just sharing information 
and and caring for one another in it and and i think that's a real strength of of people who are in operations we we kind of we we connect and we share things so freely and i love that i think i think it's really important isn't it that we keep that that big picture yeah. view of church yeah um and it isn't about our little our little corner or our little empire yeah but actually we are part of the worldwide church yeah um and we can work together yeah for Absolutely gospel right. good yeah that kingdom mindset yeah yeah this is good yeah great so I want to finish on two two promos i mean we're talking about sharing information one of the things that you can has been trying to do which um the team and, and some of the board are involved in is this kind of benchmarking survey and i think we we sh- this is useful isn't it for those who are in the uk who are going how much do you pay somebody in operations you know what are, what are the different roles that you have in operations and and i, I think i guess what what you kind of trying to do on this benchmark survey is to kind of pull together a whole load of data from hundreds of churches yeah. that kind of collate it all and then put it into a format where if you're if you're wondering how much do i pay a receptionist or how much do i pay someone in finance um in a church role then you're going to be able to look at what might be equivalent in in different areas tell me a little bit about it you know more than i do on this don't you yeah so i mean it's it's a fantastic resource you know we we are lots of local churches spread all over the country we have connections in different ways for different reasons with some other churches um Mm. but the benchmarking survey is just really helpful for getting that big picture of of church church life and particularly church administration and organization um so, you know, I think that kind of question of, OK, so we're a church of, of about 250 members and mm-hmm. um, can somebody give me an idea of, well, what level of staffing might we yeah. expect? Yeah. You know, for, for 250 members, how many how many ministry staff do, do churches generally have? Would a church of that size have a paid administrator, somebody who's part time, maybe mm you know to get that kind of sense of mm. what what's normal what's yeah. what can we expect what should we be working towards thinking about pay yeah. um people ask questions about well how much annual leave do you give what what level do you contribute to pensions at yeah. those yeah. kind of really practical questions a little bit around kind of hr stuff where in in many I guess many sectors you'd have kind of standardized yeah you know so in education you've got kind of standard pay scales and so it's very obvious yeah. if you're appointing a teacher who's got three years experience this is where you, you put land. On pay scale. yeah yeah um and it's 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 really providing that kind of resource um for churches yeah and I think it's one of those things isn't it where you it, it can it might feel like a bit of a hassle to go through the questionnaire and fill it out because it's, it's a long list of questions that we want you to to answer and participate but it's one of those things that if you put a little bit of time into you get a huge amount back don't you and I, I've loved kind of flicking through it and going oh yeah okay that's interesting an equivalent church I've got five people working on buildings two people working on admin and you can look at that and say what is how does that match up against what we're doing do we need to learn anything as we do a review we've actually got something in front of us to go yeah. ah okay i can compare it to this and it might start yeah. conversations and 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 leaders tend to i i always find it's helped to our leaders as we chat to them and say i think we need another person in in this role you know how how can you justify that and they like to see a bit of evidence they like to see a bit of thought and say they well, like the data don't they yeah they do um yeah prove it to me why do we need this person in this role and they're saying well actually here's here's why and um and here's what other churches are doing and it gives you a little bit more confidence say actually we're on the right road here yeah. or we're paying the right amount or we're giving the right kind of benefits and we've got the good you know good flexibility and all those kind of things so so yeah so it needs people to participate in with information to get this back doesn't it so absolutely absolutely. and the more people who are able to participate the better the the better the information is that is so Um, true because the data is really helpfully broken down in the report by things like regions and church sizes um and so the more people who contribute, the more we can have confidence in, in the information. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, 
And this is something you can have done for a long time. And I, I suspect it might even go back to John. You never know. Um, so the, we'll put the links on the on the socials and in the, the information as you know, if you're watching, then it'll be underneath you on on there and, and the podcast similarly. Uh, so, yeah, if you've got time and you, and you think, oh, actually, this would be beneficial for me, then would you commit to putting the time in to go and complete it and, and work through it? And if you think there's ways that we can make it better. Um, information that we could you know that's not covered then then feed it back because this is this is like joint resources that make it work and make better for everyone so so dive into that um finally becky you're you're well you, last time you're on a podcast you're talking about conferencing because you are the whiz at conferences <laughs> um and and you kind of running another one aren't they in london it's a day conference you've been setting up give us a bit of info for for listeners who, who can you know come along to this yeah, so um, day conference on the 28th of June, so that's a, a Wednesday in just a few weeks' time. Um, this conference is one that's particularly aimed at those in kind of more senior admin roles, management roles, um, in churches, in church offices. Um, as much as anything, it's a great opportunity to get together, as yeah. we talked a few minutes ago, with other people who do yeah. really similar things and who just get it. Yeah. Um, so in many ways, that's probably one of the most exciting things about um, it's a highlight. Conference. Yeah. Um, it's it's why we we keep doing them, and it's consistently what people tell us they really value about the conferences. Um, but of course, there's great content as well. Um, so this time we're thinking about more with less. Mm -hmm. um, so thinking about the fact that. Um, I think as churches, many of us are increasingly feeling that there's massive need in our communities around us. There are lots and lots of ways in which we could and perhaps should be doing more to serve our local communities. Mm -hmm. but that comes at a time when we've perhaps got less resources mm -hmm. than ever. Yeah. Um, finances are, are tight in churches. Um, cost of living has has had big impacts on on churches um, both in terms of the income that they get the people's ability to give but also our costs have gone up too so we've got less financial resources that often means we have less paid staffing resources and that comes on the back of post pandemic many of us feeling that we have less volunteers or volunteers who are able to offer less Many people have re-evaluated their kind of volunteering and their serving. And I think many of us are finding it really tough um, yeah. in some areas to, to encourage people to serve in, in ministries where we'd love to see work growing. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be spending some time thinking about how, how can we um, do more with less. It's a good topic, isn't it? I think, yeah, I think it's right. There, there are, we are being stretched in different ways. And so yeah let's let's hear it let's be encouraged and find out ways that we can do more with less so yeah check out the conference again we'll we'll put the link on there and um throw that up but um yeah becky thank you so much for your time it's been great just having a chat and i hope our listeners have enjoyed just what's on our task list at the minute and um you know if, if you want to connect with becky and i on something that you've heard on the podcast then then please do get in contact at info at the church and um, Becky and I would love to relate and interact with you and um, yeah, serve you if, if we can in any way. So um, yeah, don't worry. The podcast is still going for those who uh, were concerned that it was disappearing. Uh, no, we've got a number of different um, speakers lined up and, and looking forward to this next season. So uh, yeah, thanks for connecting and please check out the church website and uh, yeah, Becky, thanks for your time. Thank you. We'll see you again on the pod. I'm sure you will. Lovely. Take care, Great everyone. Great to chat. Bye-bye.